Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the course on biostatistics and uh, design of experiments. Today I am going to talk about uh, non-parametric tests. Okay? So far we looked at uh, parametric tests, but today it is going to be non-parametric. What is this non-parametric test? So it assumes in a parameter standard sampling distribution like your T distribution, F distribution, Z distribution, normal distribution, all these are called uh, standard parametric uh, tests and you have corresponding tables and then uh, we used those tables to find out the p values given the degrees of freedom and so on. But then you can always have data okay, which does not follow this type of distribution actually. They are distribution free data. Okay. Uh, we will look at them what are these distribution free data. Then we still need to use uh, some sort of a test for comparing distribution free data. right? So they are called non-parametric uh, tests. So, there are three cases which requires the use of non-parametric tests. Okay. What are those three cases? Okay. Um, there exists severely unequal variance between the groups that means uh, they do not follow the homogeneity of variance. What is that homogeneity of variance? That means uh, we assume that the variance is almost similar from each group. Okay. Uh, the distribution of the data for the response is not normal. That means they do not follow a normal distribution. Normal is mean, median, mode are all is same, but here they are very different okay? or um, they have uh, not it is basically ordinal. Okay? The data could be ordinal that means it is not uh, interval scale there are no interval scale type of measurements okay? like uh, we have pH as a function of time, uh, temperature as a function of time. Okay? So, you have the time as your interval. Okay? In such situations okay, then obviously uh, we need to use something else and they are called non-parametric um, type of uh, data and so we need to use non-parametric test. Okay. So, homogeneity of variance is violated and the data is not normal um, or the data is ordinal that means there is no um, x axis like a time for example, no? pH versus time or uh, temperature versus time it is more of an ordinal type. Okay. Then we use the non-parametric uh, type of test. Uh, you have similar uh, to each of the parametric test a corresponding non-parametric test and we will spend some time on each one of them as well. So, suppose I am comparing two independent uh, samples um, generally we talked quite a lot right two sample t test. Okay. Um, then for a non-parametric we use something called Mann Whitney or Wil Wilcoxon rank test rank sum test Wilcoxon rank sum test. If you are comparing dependent samples that means uh, the pair t test you are using the same subjects for uh, uh, giving the placebo as well as the drug you are using the same subjects for giving the drug A and drug B. Uh, then we use uh, corresponding non-parametric test is sign test or Wilcoxon signed rank test. Okay. Uh, if you are comparing k independent samples that means you are comparing uh, um, many drugs I want to see whether there is a statistical difference between drugs. We used to do ANOVA one way ANOVA right we remember all this very well. Uh, corresponding non-parametric test is Kruskal Wallis test. So, these are the tests you need to know especially for non-parametric data. Um, like I said when do you know it is non-parametric if uh, the homogeneity of variance is violated or it is not like a normal distribution okay, or some sort of a distribution like T or F uh, or Z Z type of distribution and then the data is ordinal there is no um, variation with respect to time or something like that. Then we need to use these type of test to determine for comparing independent samples, comparing dependent samples, looking at large number of samples and so on actually. Later on we will also talk about what is uh, this uh, homogeneity of variance, how do you find out uh, later on. But in, uh, as of now we will talk about these various non-parameter based tests. Okay, so, let us look at this Mann Whitney Wilcoxon rank sum test. When do you use it? when the populations are not normally distributed, um, the sample size could be small. So, it is very difficult uh, to assemble them as a normal response is ordinal that means integer numbers type response. Okay. Um, so, what do we do? 
we can say H uh, naught that is the um, null hypothesis is you are looking at distribution of population A and population B, the null hypothesis could be A is equal to B, the H A the alternate hypothesis, hypothesis could be one of them right, A is not equal to B that means population A and population B are not the same or population A is larger than population B that is A greater than B or population A is less than population B that is A less than B. So, these could be the various types of uh, uh, alternate hypothesis and this could be the null hypothesis just like the previous uh, parametric based test actually. Okay, let us uh, look at some problems okay, later on, but initially um, we are looking at okay, A is equal to B distribution of A and B are same whereas, uh, A is not equal to B right, here A is greater than B okay, uh, because A is shifted to the right. Okay. So, for example, we can say is there an evidence that the values of A are generally larger than that of B. If this is on this side, we can say is there evidence that the values of A is generally less than that of uh, population B. These are some good references which I am talking about here you know, uh, it is worth uh, looking at these references books which gives you quite a lot of uh, uh, examples related to health sciences and biological sciences. Okay. Okay, so, what do we do? In this uh, we look rank all the data. So, suppose we have uh, N A observation for uh, sample A, N B observations for sample B. So, we combine all the results together and rank them that means 1, 2, 3, 4 the smallest value called 1 and so on okay. and then put them in ascending order that means um, smallest value at the bottom uh, that is 1 then the next uh, larger is 2 like that, but you have to combine both sets. Okay. Uh, then sum the ranks of the observations from population A separately that will be called W A, sum the ranks of uh, population B that will be called W B, assign average rank to these tied observations. Suppose if um, I have a data 16 in um, population A and I have another data 16 in population B, what do I do? I will uh, add 2 ranks divide by 2 that is called the average rank. Okay. So, the alternate hypothesis is um, a less than b reject h naught if w a is smaller than w b. So, it is exactly like that. So, if w a rank is smaller than w b then a less than b that is the alternate hypothesis and if w a is big than w b okay, then alternate will be a greater than b okay. and of course, the null hypothesis will be a equal to b. So, you understand. So, what we do is we combine all the data and then rank them okay the smallest will get rank 1 then next one will be rank 2 like that the largest will get the highest rank and then you sum all the ranks related to a and call it w a sum all the ranks related to b call it w b okay and then if uh, w a is smaller than w b the alternate will be a less than b if w a is bigger than w b then the alternate will be a greater than b okay so you understand this uh, and then there is a table for this there is a table also for ranks okay, and then uh, we can reject the null hypothesis or accept the null hypothesis based on the statistics and the table comparison okay, just like uh, the normal parametric test. Let us look at a problem and uh, before going to that this is the table okay, this is the table as you can see um, n is the sample size of the group with the smaller rank. Okay n is the sample size of the group with the smaller rank and this here you have the 2 alphas the 0 0.05 probability and 0 0.01 probability. Okay. Um, so, n this is the smaller rank sum must be less than in order to reject the H naught okay, for a one tailed test. Similarly, you also have a table for the two tailed test. Okay. So, this table contains values the smaller rank sum must be less than in order to reject the H naught for a one tailed test. Do you understand? Okay. So, we have uh, here uh, sample size of the group with the smaller rank sum and this is the sample size of the group with the larger rank sum. Do you understand? Okay. Now, let us uh, do a problem here. This problem is taken from this particular references. Okay. It is general of laboratory clinical medicine. Uh, we are looking at um, the fasting glucose levels of uh, patients who are having Huntington's disease and uh, the those of the control. So, glucose is given orally uh, to those 
with the Huntington disease as well as to a group of the control and then after 5 hours, okay, the data is collected that is the glucose present in terms of Mg and the uh, hypothesis is is the glucose greater for patients with Huntington disease. That means H0 is control equal to hunt Huntington, we will call it C is equal to H, HA is okay, con control is less than Huntington, do you understand control is less than Huntington, so C is less than H. So as I said uh, this example is nicely taken from this reference. Okay, so what do you do? Uh, this is the data, so you have the control um, the glucose 10 uh, control and then 11 with Huntington, okay, 11 with Huntington, 10 with this is the glucose levels after uh, um, 5 hour after oral ingestion, okay. Uh, this is the value, this is the value. So, obviously, we cannot consider this as a normal distribution because it is uh, sort of ordinal. So, what do we do? We combine all these data, so 11 plus 10, 21 sets of data and then we arrange them in the ascending order, that means increasing order. So, we give 65 starting then go right up to 100, this 100 will come there. So, that will get a mark of rank of 21, 65 will, there are two 65s as you can see here, here. So, this will get a rank of 1.5 because 1 plus 2. So, these two 65s will get 1.4, 1.2 rank, do you understand? Then comes 73, then comes 75, then comes 77, there are two 77s here, 177 the here. So, this will get rank of 5. 5 and 6, so 5 plus 6 divide 2, 5.5, 5.5, 5 .5. like that you rank all the data, okay. Now some of them belongs to A, some of them belongs to B, do not forget that. So we need to separate the A's together and the B's together and then add up to get W A and W B, okay, <coughs> okay, okay. So um, again here we are putting down these ranks here, okay, so as you can see here. In this particular case, uh, these two got 1.5 rank and um, uh, then you have the 3 rank and so on, okay, right up to 21, this got the rank 21. So now if you add up all these ranks that get you W control, if you add up all these ranks we get the WH. Now the goal is to tell the null hypothesis is, is the control is equal to H, okay, or control is less than H, that is the alternate hypothesis. So, we need to go to the table to cross check, okay. Let us uh, look at it, WA is 78 if you add up all these and WB is 153 if you add up all these things. So, once you do that, now we go to the table, uh, this one corresponds to the lower one and that one corresponds to the higher one. So, we look at 10 and 11, so we get 95 <coughs> percent is 86 and 99 percent is 77. So, if the data uh, which you get 78 is smaller, okay. So, NC is 10 that is the smallest comes here and the largest uh, comes here. So, this is 11, this is 10, okay. We will reject if the rank sum of the control group is less than this 86 at 95 percent or less than 77. So, what do we get? The answer is 78. So, here 78 is less than 86, okay. So, at 95 percent or alpha of or probability of 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. So, what is the null hypothesis? The null, null hypothesis is the blood glucose level is the same um, for the control as well as those suffering from Huntington disease and uh, as per this, um, we got uh, a number of uh, 78, that is the smallest number and this, when you look at the smallest number and compare it here, this number is larger. So we reject the null hypothesis, okay. So, we accept this alternate that is control will have lower H, do you understand? So, you look at this table and then um, this color rows correspond to the lower um, data points, this corresponds to the higher data points, in this case this is control and in this case this is the, the Huntington disease, okay. So, for if you take the 95 percent you get 86. But uh, when you add up uh, all the, um, the, uh, the control um, ranks, we get it as 78 because 78 is lower than 86, we uh, reject the null hypothesis. If, some, uh, if that WA has been larger than 86, then we can, uh, cannot reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, we need to reject the null hypothesis, okay. So, that is one problem, um, okay. So, using the Wilkinson rank sum test, we have evidence to suggest that the 5 hour glucose level for individuals with Huntington disease 
this is greater than that for the healthy controls at 95 percent or p is equal to less than 0 5. Why we took this? Because uh, uh, the 78 is less than 86 at the value of this. Okay, let us look at uh, the paired sample. So, we looked at uh, a two sample equivalent to two sample t test, we got uh, this. Now, dependent samples that means pair t test where you are, comp you are using the same subjects for control as well as drug. There are two different types of test, one is called the sign test, other is called the Wilcoxon. Wilcoxon signed rank test. Okay, let us look at the signed test. So, it, this is used when we have no evidence that the paired differences are not normally distributed. So, if it is normally distributed, it is not difficult, we can use the paired sample t test and I taught you how to do that long time back, right. Uh, the response is ordinal, that means it is just numerics, there is no um, independent variable like as a function of time and so on. Used when the response is difficult to quantify. Sometimes we may have situations like better, got worse, no change, uh, marginal change, okay. Okay, that sort of thing. But uh, the main drawback of this test is the magnitude of the pair difference is lost because it is looking at only the signs, plus, minus, comparing the pluses with the minus. The magnitude, how much it has changed, is lost. But the, the other test can help you out on that. The Wilcoxon signed rank test can help you out of that. But the sign test, um, loses it. Okay. So, it looks at the pluses, it looks at the minuses and then it considers only the non-zero pair differences. Okay. If there are 0, we neglect it. Uh, so, if uh, you have more of pluses than minus, we can indicate that some type of change has occurred. So, if the null hypothesis is no change is true, we expect pluses and minus to be equal. So, pluses minus 0.5. Okay. It should follow a binomial distribution. But um, if it does not follow with the probability of 0 0.05, then we can use uh, the test to find out whether it is significant or not. Okay? So, it is quite simple. Okay, Let us look at uh, an example which uses the sign test. Um, this was taken from this particular book, uh, sorry, reference Journal of Clinical Oncology. So, they are looking at hepatitic arterial infusion of uh, Floxuridine and cisplatin. These are anti cancer drug for the treatment of uh, colorectal cancer. Okay. So, 29 patients data was recorded before and after infusion. So, is there any evidence? So, uh, there was an infusion of uh, fluorofloxuridine and cisplatin anti cancer drugs for the treatment of colorectal cancer. Um, it was given to 29 patients. Um, data was recorded before and after infusion. So, is there evidence that patients had a better performance score after infusion? That is the question here asked. Let us look at the data. So, before infusion, so we have uh, there are uh, 29 data points, okay, before infusion you got this data, okay. this is sort of a qualitative 0, 1, 2, 3. After infusion, same patients that is why well. it is almost like a paired uh, T test which we used to do for parametric. So, you get like this. Okay. Now, you subtract A minus B. Uh, so, you get negatives, some of them are zeros. So, you get negatives, some of them are zeros. You get some positives as well and so on actually after infusion. Okay, what do you do? H naught, no change in performance. Of course, status quo uh, following infusion or more specifically median change in performance score is 0. Okay. HA is performance scores improved following infusion or more specifically median change in performance score is greater than 0 because we are subtracting A minus B. So, we expect it to be better. Okay? If it had been B minus A, that is different, but here we are doing it after infusion and before infusion. So, subtracting A minus B, so we expect it to be better, that means uh, it should be greater than 0. Okay, Let us look at this data. So, there are some zeros, so forget about that. So, some negatives are there that means uh, the infu after infusion is not good, but there are some positives. So, a lot of positives appear to be there. So, we feel that after infusion things are better okay, as you can see. Okay, now, let us add up the negatives, let us add up the positives, forget about the zeros here. Do you understand? Uh, intuitively, we may think that uh, intu uh, infusion has uh, helped because we have a lot of positives coming when compared to the negatives, but we need to do a proper statistical test. Okay, let us look at uh, these data again. 
So, we will look at only the pluses and minuses. So, as you can see the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, plus is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11. Okay? So, you have 11 pluses and 6 minuses in 17 data points. Okay? So, if H naught is true, then we, sh with the, uh, we should have a probability of 0 0.5 for the 17 data. Okay? Uh, whereas, uh, if uh, um, if not, then obviously we need to um, use the binomial out of 17. Okay, out of 17 we get 11 positives. Out of 17 we get 11 positives. Probability is 0 0.5. Okay, so what will be the p-value? So we failed, um, and this is the p-value, but the p-value is much larger. So we failed to reject the H naught. So, there is insufficient evidence to conclude, although it looks lot of positives, but then um, 11 out of 17, uh, when you put a p of 0 0.05, it gives you a probability of 0.166, okay? it gives you a probability of 0.166, um, obviously uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, there is insufficient evidence to conclude the performance score. Um, we use a binomial uh, approach to calculate the probability and uh, let me tell you how to get this uh, particular value. So, the probability of x greater than or equal to 11 uh, when n is 17 uh, with the probability of 0.5 that is what we need to calculate. So, we need to calculate binomial distribution when um, 11 successes out of 17 um, with the probability of 0.5, 12 successes out of 17 with the probability of 0.5. 13 successes out of 17 with the probability of 0.5, 14 successes out of 17 with the probability of 0.5, 15 successes out of 17 with the probability of 0.5, 16 out of 17 with the probability of 0.5 and 17 out of 17 with the probability of 0.5 and add all of them and that should give you this. Okay, let us look at it. Um, we use the same binomial distribution. Okay, we use the binomial distribution relationship. So, by norm 11 out of 17 uh, with the probability of 0 0.5 false, okay. that should give you so this will become 12 out of 17, so then this will become 13 out of 17 this will become 14 out of 17, this will become 15 out of 17, this will become 16 out of 17 and finally, this will become 17 out of 17. Okay. So, if you add up all these terms together, we will get 0.166 okay? and that is how you get this probability that this probability tells you um, probability of uh, more than or equal to 11 in a size of 17 if the probability of occurrence is 0 0.5. But then uh, the sign test has this uh, biggest drawback because um, it does not consider the, um, the magnitude of the sign, it just looks at the signs plus, minus and so on. So, in order to overcome that particular problem, we have something called a Wilcoxon signed rank test. Okay? It does little bit uh, consider the <coughs> magnitude. Like I said signed test, the magnitude or the size uh, of the paired difference is lost. Okay? So, well, so, Wilcoxon signed rank test looks at uh, the, the um, sign change as well as it also considers the magnitude by some sort of a ranking. Okay? Generally, we use it when they are not normal. Obviously, like I said, you are looking at non-normal distribution and the response is ordinal like the previous case. Okay? So, let us look at one problem. This is based on a, a particular reference here. Um, so, resting energy expenditure for patients with cystic fibrosis. This is the example taken from this particular reference. 
so a researcher believes that patients with cystic fibrosis expend greater energy during resting than those um, without CF. Okay? So, these people said. So, to obtain a fair comparison, uh, 13 patients with cystic fibrosis, 13 patients without cystic fibrosis are compared. Okay? So, um, the, 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 the hypothesis is uh, CF expends greater energy during resting than those without CF. So, the data was then uh, averaged out or, uh, or um, adjusted for age, sex, height and weight. Um, so, the data is given here. Okay, cystic fibrosis, okay, these are the data and these are the healthy. Okay. So, the comparison is cystic fibrosis expends more energy. Okay. So, what we have done is C minus H, um, C minus H, C minus H, H. Again, then look at the sign difference. This is plus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, 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 plus and so on actually. Uh, now, you take the absolute difference of this data and then you rank them just like one originally we did rank test. So, the lowest gets 1, uh, the next one gets 2 and so on okay, until uh, the highest gets 13. What is sign rank? You put the sign also now. Okay. So, 2 will become minus 2, uh, 1 will become plus 1 and so on. So, this will become minus 5 uh, and the rest all will become plus corresponding rank. Okay. So, it considers not only some sort of the absolute values as well as it considers the rank. Okay. Okay, now, you um, so we have these 13 sets of data, uh, we look at them, then we calculate the positive ranks, some of the positive ranks and then we calculate the sum of the negative ranks. So, negative ranks is 2 plus 5 is 7, positive ranks the rest of them, okay, t plus and t minus. Okay. Uh, reject the H naught, it states that there is no difference between the populations. If either one of these ranks sum is large and the other is small. So, the Wilcoxon signed rank test, it uses the smaller rank uh, from these two ranks, okay, minimum of that row, just like uh, the original uh, uh, rank test. Okay, it uses that as a test statistics. statistics okay. So, the H naught here is the resting energy expenditure of individuals with CF is equal to the healthy individuals who are the same uh, gender, age, height. That means, there is no difference in the energy spent by the CF and non-CF and HA the alternate hypothesis is the resting energy expenditure of individuals with the CF is greater than the healthy individuals who have with after adjusting for gender, age, height and weight. Okay. Okay, so, we are doing this uh, pair difference um, 0 for H naught greater than 0 for uh, HA, do you understand? Okay, so, uh, we take the smaller of the 2, okay, in this case the minus which is 7, okay. now is T7 much smaller for the and then calculate what is the p value using the um, Wilcoxon signed rank test or statistical. Okay. So, we look at the um, Wilcoxon signed rank test table, so we have this uh, degree uh, the number of data points, we have the 2 tailed and 1 tailed, let us look at the 1 tailed, so 21 and 12 we get observed value is much less than these values. So, we reject the, so out of the thir uh, 13 uh, and 7, okay. so we take the 7 here, okay. 7 okay. and the total number of data points is 13 and here it is 7 is the data we are talking about. Uh, so, we go to the total number is 13 okay, and uh, we are comparing with 7. So, you should get for 95 okay, uh, or 99, 21 and 12. So, these numbers are much larger than the 7. Okay. So, reject H naught at even P is equal to 0 0.01. Okay. Do you understand? It is exactly like the previous uh, signed rank test. We were looking at the table. Okay. Here the total number, uh, because it is paired, we have only one set of number, whereas in the other rank test, you remember, we had rows and columns, because we had, uh, it is almost equivalent to a two sample t test. Uh, then uh, these test statistics must be, low, must be lower than the table value to reject null hypothesis. So, we got 7 and here we are having uh, 21 or even 12. So, these are much larger than the test statistics. So, we reject the H naught at a p value of uh, 0 0.01. Do you understand? So, so individuals with cystic fibrosis 
have a larger resting energy expenditure when compared to healthy individuals at a p is um, less than 0 0.1. Do you understand? So, how to do this problem? So, we looked at uh, um, two types of uh, non parametric test one for uh, equivalent to two sample t test, okay, the other one is equivalent to a paired sample t test. Um, and the corresponding uh, sign test, rank test, then we have the paired rank test and so on. Each one of them have their own tables for comparison. Okay? So, we will continue on this uh, uh, non-parametric test in the next class also. Thank you very much.